We're at a point in the AI race where the big dogs have sort of been solidified. Not to say that a new company can't arise and compete, but things are pretty solidified in terms of who are the big competitors in the AI space fighting for that number one spot. Today's video is a little different because I want to present to you a case study where I personally believe Google is going to be the winner of the AI race. Now, in recording this video, I want to be completely honest, I don't own any Google stock. I probably should, but I don't. With that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. I'm going to be sharing with you again why I think Google is going to win the AI race. But first, let's talk about the different verticals that I think are important to capture victory in this AI race. You have the companies that manufacture the chips. First, we have NVIDIA. And let's be honest, NVIDIA is winning. The founders are winning. The stockholders are winning. The employees are winning. NVIDIA has a comfortable lead when it comes to chip manufacturing. And they also have a lot of partnerships. And they also have the government support, which is key when it comes to this whole AI race. And then you have the companies that are serving inference, that are doing inference. And you have Grok with a Q, Cerebrus, Amazon, and Microsoft also partake in this. And these companies basically are serving you the AI models via API. If you've used the Anthropic API, Anthropic's API, in my opinion, is terrible. Most startups that I've worked at, actually all startups that I've worked at, have either used Amazon or Microsoft, particularly Amazon Bedrock, to have access to these models, right? And basically what these inference companies do is they architect these hardware setups in order for you to have fast inference, right? So speed and reliability is the game here. And then you have the models themselves, right? And this is where a lot of competition exists. You have OpenAI, Anthropic, Meta, DeepSea, Kimi, you have Mistral and all these different labs. We know that the big dogs really competing are OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. I definitely think Meta can catch up. I wouldn't put it past Zux. Zux is the same guy, if you remember, Instagram was just pictures and videos, right? It was first just pictures, then they added videos. And then the boy Zux tried to buy Snapchat, and Snapchat said no, and he did what every mafia boss would do. He punched them in the throat, copied their feature, and I have, listen, I have kids in my church who think Instagram invented stories, not Snapchat. Legitimately, right? This is, so I wouldn't put it past Zuck. Yes, the llama models kind of suck. They're nowhere to be found. But in my opinion, when you look at Zuck's history, he's a mob boss. The, the guy just knows how to punch companies in the face and do things better than them, right? So like you look at the WhatsApp acquisition, you look at him buying Instagram, the guy is a genius. So I wouldn't put it past him, but right now it's open air, Anthropic and Google. And then interface, meaning the chat interface or the UI, the UX that people are using in order to interact with these models, right? OpenAI having ChatGBT, um, the interface itself, very popular amongst normies and even us developers. And then you have Anthropics, uh, Claude.com. I'll be honest, I barely use it. Um, not like it breaks. ChatGBT breaks too. They both suck. This is why I use T3 Chat. My boy Theo's product, you should check it out if you at all use any of the models. For developers, both OpenAI and Anthropic are in the space. They develop not only models for developers, but also developer tooling, right? For like Codex CLI, Claude Code, right? So they're very much in the developer space. And then you have media, right? Image gen, video gen models. I don't think any of them have video gen models that are public yet, but media, image gen models, open AI is in the space. So you see all these different verticals and we see open AI has their hands in four verticals here, um, Anthropic really in three, but none of them have their hands in every vertical. But this is where Google is different. Because if we look at Google, Jensen, the three women that watch my videos, one of them being my mom. By the way, hi, mom, if you're watching this, thanks for watching my videos. If you look at this right here, Google is involved in everything. Google makes their own chips, TPUs. Google has their own inference. They have their own cloud. Vertex AI, you can you can use all the different models like Anthropic OpenAI through, I don't know about OpenAI, but I know you can use Anthropic models through Vertex. They have their own model, Gemini 3, which is arguably in the top two, top three. They have their own interface, the AI Studio and Google Search. Now, here's the thing. I didn't really think about this. If you asked me a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, what is the biggest consumer used AI? And I would have said ChatGBT, but I watched a video of Theo's and he made me realize ChatGPT does not have the biggest user product for AI. It's actually search, it's actually Google. If I search, what do Christians believe about Jesus? I'm gonna, no, not DS Chat. Look, DS Chat is pretty good too, but right here we're focused on Google. So if I search on Google, 
Notice the first thing that pops up is AI overview. This is the most used AI feature. This is the most consumer used AI. And then you see Jesus Christ as the Son of God, both fully divine, fully human, the promised Messiah who came to save humanity from their sin and the crucifixion and resurrection, offering eternal life to believers and then and that he will return to judge the world. So this is the most used AI consumer product. So AI Studio, you have search and then you have AI Studio. And this is where Nano Banana and all the other Google stuff you can use. It is terrible. The user experience is terrible. It's slow. It's buggy. And then you have for devs, anti-gravity, which is basically their cursor slash, uh, what you call it, their cursor slash windsurf competitor. It's an IDE. I'm pretty sure it's a fork of VS Code. By the way, all the models are free on anti-gravity. What's funny though is even though all the models are free, because it's pretty bad, a lot of people are not using it. A lot of devs are not using it, but they're in that arena as well. And then when it comes to media, they have Nano Banana Pro, which is by far the best image gen model. So you see that Google is the only company that has their hand in every vertical listed here. And not only do they have their hand in every vertical listed here, ladies and gents, they also have all the money in the world. Google has all the money, they're public, and they're profitable. They actually make money. All these companies, I, I can't confidently say about NVIDIA, actually, why don't we just search the web is nvidia profitable i'm not even sure okay so nvidia is profitable so out of and then amazon and microsoft will not consider them but every other company open ai anthropic deep sea kimmy like uh, most of these companies i don't want to say every other company but most of these companies are not profitable google has all the money in the world they have literally gdp level money they have one the best talent right they have their hand in every pot. Google is pretty much set up to kick butt. They're, they're pretty much set up to win everywhere. Now, here's the thing. I just mentioned to you that anti-gravity sucks, AI studio sucks. So why am I confident that Google will win? Well, here's the thing. It's particularly with anti-gravity, I actually wanna talk about anti-gravity for a second. They launched anti-gravity and a lot of people were like, a lot of my favorite dev YouTubers and people I respect on Twitter were like, yo, this is pretty cheeks. Like. It's not pretty good. And here's one thing I realized. There's three types of releases in the Silicon Valley company, YC, raised money, VC backed land. There's for the love of the game drops, right? Love of the game. And then you have the make shareholders happy. And then there is customers, right? You do it for your customers you do it for your squad now here's the thing for the love of the game drops are usually like when you when a company does something open source like a big company like google they you know announce something open source some sort of like thing that's going to help developers and stuff this is for the love of the game right there is some benefit to it but generally there are companies that do this and the main reason is for the love of the game and then you have drops to make the shareholders happy right? For example, GPT 5.2 is a great example. The model is just not good. But Gemini dropped, Google dropped all these things, Nano Banana dropped. And I'm sure the open AI team was like, dang, they're cooking. It looks bad. Let's drop a new model. It might not be the best, but it looks good for the shareholders. So there are things that you do to make the shareholders happy. And then third, you do certain things for the customers. In my opinion, anti-gravity was more of a number two. The reason why it's okay for them to do a number two is because they can turn the number two into number three. Meaning, I don't know if you guys know this, but anti-gravity sort of stems from Google's aqua hire of windsurf. They basically bought the windsurf leadership team and took some of the windsurf code. So the, it, there's no doubt that that team is capable of building something really good. But in my opinion, they rush the launch to make shareholders happy. And this is one thing you got to understand. Google is capable of building good products or, or let's say they're not. Let's say they're terrible and they're not. They got the money to buy out anybody. Now, if I was Google, I would buy out T3 chat. I would buy out, you know, maybe a cursor, right? They, well, they bought out Windsurf, right? So they don't have to do that. But I'm saying they have the talent. And if the talent's not capable enough, they have the money. Right. So Google is in a position where if the leadership is smart, they essentially can take over every single sphere. There's also another thing I have to mention what Google owns. They own search. 
They own the most popular browser, the gateway to the internet, and they own YouTube. So they got all the juicy data in the world, all the vlog data, all the Mr. Beast videos, all the Ross Mike videos. You should like, comment, subscribe so the AI can continue to scrape these videos. They have all this data. They got all this money. They have their hand every single where, like in every single vertical. They also have great talent. And not to get political, but the current administration seems to be very fond of big tech companies, right? The America and China are in this arms race and the American government is willing to support a lot of the big dogs so that they can succeed so that America can stay on top. So that the land of the free and the home of the brave can continue to stay on top. By the way, I'm Canadian. Don't get your feelings hurt. I've pretty much glazed Google for the last, what, eight, nine, ten minutes. There's one thing Google's known for. I don't know if you're familiar with this little known site called killed by Google, but Google has this uh, behavior of just killing products, right? Now, on one hand, it's not a bad idea to like, you know, just let go of things that might not be working, but like, dang, like, look at this, like, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, right? So it's, it's one of those things where it's hard to say, oh, Google's going to stick to every vertical because they're very known to kill something that they feel is not working. But sincerely speaking, what can defeat Google? What can stop Google? In my humble opinion, there's two parties. Number one is themselves, right? Google can stop Google, whether it's bad leadership or bad direction, bad vision, that is very much possible, right? The giants can be slayed. And number two is the government. Although the current administration is favorable, that doesn't mean the same administration is going to continue on the next term, right? And Google is almost kind of a monopoly, right? So what happens if the government deems it as a monopoly and starts to break it up or they are stopped from doing a certain acquisition, right? So in my opinion, Google has their own self as ops and the government potentially, well, the current administration is favorable. And at the end of the day, it doesn't mean they're solid. It doesn't mean an open AI Anthropic or any of these big dogs or some new company can't come and knock them in the face. But what I'm saying is Google has a good lead steady lead they've acquired great talent from open ai from windsurf and all these different other startups and in my humble opinion if i were to invest in one company saying that this is the one that's going to win the ai race it would be google i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this case study let me know if you want to watch more of these i know it's a little bit different but we got to try new stuff make sure to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one peace